Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Connor. I'm the founder of the Unicorn Factory, a freelancer marketplace in New Zealand. On this channel, I teach people who cannot code how to build their own online marketplaces and directories using tools like Webflow, Airtable, and Zapier. In today's video, I'm going to be breaking down my freelancer onboarding automation that I have set up inside of Zapier. If you're new to this channel and you want to learn how to build your own marketplace with Webflow, Airtable and Zapier, then please subscribe to the channel. I'll be sharing regular videos on how to set up your own workflows and automations. I'll give you a behind the scenes tour of what I'm doing with the Unicorn Factory and hopefully that will get you up and running. But without further ado, let's dive into the video. Cool, so the freelancer onboarding process breaks down into three steps. Step number one is when a freelancer applies. What do I do? What automation is triggered? Step number two is what happens when I approve them? What does the process look on my end and what kind of automation happens in the background? And then lastly, I'm going to show you how I announce to the world that a new freelancer has joined. So let's check out step number one. Cool, so I use Zapier for the freelancer onboarding process and right now we're looking at the first stage of the onboarding process which is when a freelancer applies to join the Unicorn Factory. So the way that the onboarding process works for freelancers is once a freelancer has signed up through MemberStack, they get redirected to this particular page here where they can then click on create an application and that opens a Airtable form that lays the foundation for them building their own profile page. So once they submit the application form, a new record is created in the Airtable with all the information that they submitted and it gets added to my freelancer funnel here. If we go and have a look into Zapier to see what happens behind the scene, we can see that there are four steps involved. So step number one here is when a freelancer submits the form. So that is the first step that triggers the automation. The next step is, is it updates certain fields inside of that record in Airtable. Now the fields that it updates in Airtable is the needs review status and a few little other pieces here. So once Zapier updates that particular record to be in review, it moves it to a new view inside of Airtable, which is the review form here, which just shows me all the information that I need to see in order to approve the freelancer. Another thing that it does is once the freelancer has applied, it also automatically creates a new record inside of MailerLite that triggers the onboarding automation and email sequence. So the emails that I send them is just tips and tricks on how to add proper case studies because I take case studies into consideration when before approving them to the platform. Lastly, I get also a Slack notification in one of my private Unicorn Factory channels. I highly recommend setting up Slack notifications whenever you're using any types of automations, otherwise you'll just kind of lose the overview of all the things that are going on at any given time. Cool, so next up I'm gonna show you the process of what happens when a freelancer gets approved. So let's just go and have a look at all the individual steps involved and you can already see that this particular part of the onboarding process is a bit juicier. There's a little bit more going on. So first of all, what triggers the onboarding? So as you recall, when a freelancer applies, they get moved to the in review view. And just so you know, there's usually a bit more information on here, but I had to remove it because there was some real freelancer data in there. So I've changed a whole bunch of things. But all I need to do is I just go through their application, I go through their um, bio, their locations, I check out their portfolio links, all that type of stuff. And then what I need to do is if I want to approve them, all I need to do is just click on the button here, which is the approve button. So as soon as that is selected, what happens is this record here um, is moved to a new view called Webflow Ready. And that has all of the information that the freelancer submitted when they filled out their application form in stage one. So as soon as the freelancer is moved into the Webflow Ready view, the automation inside of Zapier is triggered. So the first step that happens is there is a text conversion. So if we go and have a look at what you can do inside of the Airtable form is you can add um, Markdown. And Markdown is a coding language. I don't even need to get into it into too much detail. But what we need to do in order to send this type of Markdown to Webflow is we need to convert it to HTML. 
And that is what step number two does. It takes the Airtable markdown from the bio section and it converts it to HTML. The next step is sending all the information that the freelancer submitted inside of the form to Webflow. So you basically have the Webflow collection set up at this point and all you need to do is just map the Airtable field to the appropriate Webflow field. The only other thing that you need to do is then for the bio field inside of your Webflow collection is instead of adding the record from Airtable is you use the conversion that you created in step two. That way you're not sending Markdown to Webflow, you're sending HTML to Webflow. Next, there's a more fancier, more advanced step that you don't need to worry about right now, but in case you wanted to add a multi-reference collection, for example, for services or skills to someone's profile, you need to use a custom request because the native Webflow Zap doesn't have that solution. Um, so you can write some custom code and I'll be sharing how that works in a future video. Next up, we update that subscriber inside of MailerLite. So we move them from the in review stage to the live stage and that is where all the active freelancers sit. So they'll be getting our newsletters, they'll get a welcome onboarding email sequence and a whole bunch of other fancy things like that. Next up, and this is the most important step, I cannot stress it enough, if you ever wanna let your users edit their profiles, you need to use this step. You need to update the Airtable record with the Webflow item ID and collection ID that was created in step three. Because later on, when you want your users to edit a profile page inside of Webflow, you can use the update item feature, but you'll need the Webflow item ID and you need to store it somewhere and we store it inside of your table. Next up, I invite a user to join our Circle community. Circle is a community platform that is essentially a forum. Um, I didn't mention them in my no-code tools video because I'm reserving up a separate video for all of my marketing tools. And then last but not least, I update some links inside of MemberStack. So one thing that I send to MemberStack is the updated link to their profile so that when they then jump into the dashboard, there's a link where they can view their profile page and I need to update that in MemberStack in order to allow them to do that. So before we dive into the final step, I just wanted to remind you that this, what I'm showing you right now, is what it looks like after three years. That is not where I started and that is definitely not where you should start. When I started setting up the freelancer onboarding zap, it was so simple that it was simply a freelancer applies and I just send what I could send to Webflow. There were no custom requests, there's no mail light or any of that stuff. So the key thing to keep in mind when you're setting up these automations is just just to do what's necessary and just skip all the fancy stuff unless you really, really need them. Cool, and so the last step of the freelancer onboarding process is triggered by when a freelancer is moved from the needs review stage to active profile stage. So I actually forgot to mention that in the previous step. When I said that it's important to update the item ID inside of the Airtable record, what it also includes is changing the status from needs review to active profile. And what that does is it sends all of the information for the different freelancers to a new view called the active freelancer view. And that active freelancer view is basically everyone who is currently active on my page. So I can remove freelancers from here. I've got a nice overview of everything that's going on, but most importantly, it triggers that final part of the automation. And this is what it looks like when a tweet is sent to um, Twitter as soon as a freelancer is approved. So it's a really good way to spread the word. Um, and so if you're not already following our Twitter channel, please jump on over and subscribe. Cool, so that is it. That is the free stage freelancer onboarding process that I have set up in Zapier. It's been a huge time saver being able to set this up. I remember when I started with the Unicorn Factory, there's so many things that I had to do manually. For example, adding um, skills and services manually or manually changing the rich text. So um, Zapier has come a long way, Webflow has come a long way with the types of Zapier integrations that they have. But yeah, let me know what it is that you're working on. If you found this video valuable, please give it a like, comment down below what it is that you're working on. Apparently that helps very much with moving me up the ranks on YouTube. So I would appreciate any type of support. But again, thank you for stopping by and I'll see you for the next one. Bye.